When I was a little kid, I didn't really have that many friends. I had imaginary friends though, and I always thought it would be cool if I could bring them to life. Just imagine, as a child, of a game where you could bring your imaginative creatures and friends to life. Now, the first game you're probably thinking of is Spore, the Maxis developed PC game. This is a game where you basically evolved your own species of creatures that you created. Though, this game came out when I was 14, still no friends, but basically done with imaginary friends and creatures. Also, if you're wondering, no, I did not create phallic looking creatures, more just really stupid looking ones. Either way, I'm not here to talk about Spore, but instead this game, Amazing Island for the Nintendo GameCube. I should have been warned about this game just from the title. Look at this. Island? Nothing good is ever on an island. They're filled with dead people, dinosaurs, or Legos just waiting to be stepped on. In all honesty, any game other than a superhero based game using the word amazing is just trying to get some stupid 10 year old kid in a Hollywood video not knowing what to rent to pick it up just because the connotation of the word amazing deals with something that should be really fucking awesome. So they bug their parents to rent it and then spend hours not realizing how mediocre the game is and after finishing it get disappointed on how unamazing the game was and had to wait another goddamn month until they could rent another game. Yeah. I was that stupid kid, and I'm still pissed at myself. Our story begins with the telling of a picture book that had an island where all sorts of creatures live together in harmony. And that's it. There's nothing really that important about it other than it was loved by everybody, but soon became a fairy tale. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those cliche stories. We're then presented with the choice to choose our alter ego, and sadly, I cannot be Batman. This is just choosing your character. Other than the gender, there's no real difference between who you choose. These character models look kind of like third-rate Harvest Moon farmers, and get used to these mediocre graphics. They're gonna be like that for the whole game. We're then treated to some bland cutscenes where our character finds the picture book titled The Amazing Island. We then fall asleep before hearing voices call out to us for help. After that, we fall to the island with hopefully a goddamn parachute- Oh, we lived. Cool. Well, this is kind of bleak for an island that has no clouds, at least that we saw. We walk a couple of feet and we meet this reject Pokemon, Chinto. That's seriously his name, and he tries to scare us while looking like that. He then calls a creature known as Boss Eveline to scare us even more and eventually attack us. If you're wondering, yes, they called the boss creature the Boss Eveline. Not even gonna go into how lazy that naming is. The boss attacks, but thankfully we summon our blue eye ultimate stone bull viking thing. Yeah. I have no words for this. It's ugly. Anyways, now we get to the main gameplay, and Amazing Island is a minigame compilation game of sorts. This is our first minigame, Eveline Volley in Gloom Corridor. This is a somewhat dull game of tennis over lava. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is mash the A button at the start to serve the ball of fire. Then just time your button presses in order to return the ball to your opponent. All the while you'll hear unnecessary grunting and laughter from the characters. We win the game and revert Chinto back to his normal self. He runs off saying Lago should see this. Following him we meet Lago who just says we should meet the village elder who will explain everything. We meet our future nightmare for years to come, and he tells us that the black evil is taking over the island. Yes, that is what the evil is called in the game. No, I do not feel comfortable with it. And with these developers, I can only assume they were both lazy and probably on drugs. I'm just surprised they didn't decide to call it evil villain group, while also having them have live faces of their enemies on their headpieces. We then have a montage of the Black Evil's evil deeds before the village elder tells us to go save the island by collecting 8 visions of hope. Before we do that, we get to one of the main aspects of the game where we create a creature to join us. Back at the water mirror where we first met Lagu, we find Chinto and another person thing named Folu. Lagu explains that all three of them help create partner creatures. Folu creates them, Chinto will accessorize them, and I honestly have no clue why we need Lagu here. He didn't really say what he's useful for, but the chief said he was useful, so we'll keep him around. At first, we can't really create any creatures on our own. Folo just asks us some questions, and based off the responses, creates the creature for us. 
questions like, what direction do we go when we're lost? What we would wish for if we had one wish? Or, what I dreamt of last night? And, old friend. Well, who else was there? Was it that lazy bastard Lagu? And good for nothing. Folu then starts to create our partner that matches our feelings. I feel dead inside, but eh, this looks promising. Oh boy, I can't wait. All the guys are dancing, even Lagu. At least that's what he's good for. Here it comes! Damn, he's ugly! At least Chinto's accessories help it look a bit more... easy on the eyes? At this point, we do have a little bit of control to accessorize this thing. You can change its basic pattern and color, though a good amount of them are just painful on the eyes and none of them look good. One of them kind of just looks like poop. You can also change the size and positioning of the eyes along with various accessories. You can even change your creature's voice and I'm a little intrigued on what the hell a phantom sounds like. Alright, nope, not gonna use that. I really didn't want to accessorize my creature anymore because he looks dumb enough already. After all this, we get to take a photo and name our creature. And of course, I gave it the most appropriate name ever. Adopted. At this point, we can decide to either go talk to the Elder to find out more about our journey, or just talk to this discount Zazu from the Lion King to continue it. I decided against visiting the Nightmare Fuel, just because it's some cliche stuff about reincarnated heroes and the island is made of dreams. Now we're getting back to the minigame aspect of the game. In order to find the visions of hope, we have to venture through an obstacle course of minigames. Each course is entered by talking through Discount Zazu, who has you merge with your creature. Wait a minute. That means... I'm adopted. That joke wrote itself, everybody. Now, you have to beat the entire obstacle course in one run, but you do start with two lifelines. Lose at a minigame, and you can either quit or retry the minigame, which takes one of your lifelines. Once you lose them all, you get kicked out of the course and have to retry the entire course again. That's about it. There's no real punishment, honestly. The course doesn't change, and you still have the same minigames in the same order. You also can't really move on if you're stuck on a minigame. But here's the thing, the minigames are really easy. The only reason I sometimes lost was because I wasn't paying attention. For this course, our first minigame is Jungle Dash, where you just mash the A button to reach the finish line. Pressing B at the end gives you a small boost. The second minigame is a little bit more complicated, as it's button mash at first, then hold and release the analog stick at a certain time, and finally just time button presses. You then get some Beyblading, followed by another button mashing minigame where you fight a boss near the end. I'm putting quotes here since it's not really the boss of the course. Instead, you go against another boss, Evelyn, in another game of Evelyn Volley. This first course is pretty solid, but the others just fall flat. The game tries a nice variety of minigames, but it quickly starts throwing different versions of the same minigame. Spin Attack is basically the Beyblade one with three opponents always on the field, and the new goal of trying to knock off your opponents for points instead of surviving a horde of opponents. There's also Jungle Spurt, which is basically a different version of Jungle Dash, and the developers must have really liked tennis or some shit, because every course ends with Evelyn Volley. You seriously play it eight times with some small variations. Not only that, but you don't exactly talk to eight different Zazus to play through eight different courses. Now pay attention because this may get a bit complicated. After the first course, Courses start to split into different paths. Each path is counted as a separate course. Now that's not a bad idea, but remember, the mini games don't change and you have to beat each path in order to continue the story. You'll play a couple mini games, reach a fork in the road, decide which way to go, beat that path, then you still have to replay all the mini games up to the fork in order to take the other path. Do I hear unnecessary padding? This makes the minigames feel bland and they can get stale real quick, especially when the course forks into four different paths. Now all the minigames have rankings. Place high enough and you can get prizes. Reaching the top of the rankings can usually get you more accessories or patterns to customize your creature. 
landing on the bottom of the rankings will usually net you potions that you can use in the minigames. These potions can increase a creature's stats. Yes, each of these creatures have stats. I honestly have no clue what affects these stats. Wikipedia says it's a mix of how the creature is created, along with what frame is used as the basis of the creature, even the accessories that are attached affect the stats in some way. I don't even have a goddamn clue on how the stats affect gameplay either. I can only assume that it makes certain minigames easier, but the game really didn't explain anything about the stats. I didn't even notice a difference in the minigames whenever I used a potion. They seemed completely pointless. Oh, the minigames is just one half of the core aspect of this game. And they suck. Hopefully the creation aspect isn't as bad. Sadly, it is. Beating the first course gets us a vision of hope, a new frame which can be used as the base of a creature and the ability to actually create creatures ourselves. Now, here's the thing about creating creatures. They never really turn out how you want them to. This is due to bad controls and bad execution. The simple way to put it is that you draw the creature from one side. You design each specific limb of the creature, but you can only design it from one viewpoint. The game then automatically creates the rest of the depth, and it can get pretty bad. You do have a little control of the depth with the inflate option, but it only gives you a predetermined thickness. I can only assume this is for the stats, but once again, I didn't really notice a difference. It's also very tedious to keep having to switch between different options and menus just to create your creature. When drawing or adding accessories in the 3D space, you use the C stick for camera control, the analog stick to control the X and Y axis, and the D-pad controls some of the Z axis. Overall, it just feels really weird to control. Because of this, your creature turns out off from what you originally planned. The more courses you complete, the more frames you get along with more tools that are used to help create the creatures. The tools give you some more customization and a bit of help, but they still have some of the same problems. There's not much else to the game other than this. The story's almost non-existent, and I can't tell you what happened. I got close to finishing the game, but it doesn't auto-save. I turned off my console and went back to it the next day, and all my data was gone. I'm not going to replay it. I mean, it was just four to five hours of boring minigames tedious courses, and making creatures that look like shit. On a quick tangent, don't use the skin pattern because it's moving as hell. So yeah, it's bad. But guess what? There's a multiplayer mode. So you can play this with friends. I tried and... <sighs> it's just the same minigames with people either taking turns or playing at the same time. It's nothing special. Yeah, still don't have friends. Nothing really changed. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like what you saw, hit that like button and subscribe to get some more awesome videos in your feed. Well, that's if YouTube hopefully decides to work. Otherwise, you can always get updated via social media. The links for it is in the description below. If you want to watch some more great videos right now, you can click the annotations on the screen. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching.